Instead of the millions forced into part-time work, instead of the millions who've lost their health insurance, lost their doctors, have faced skyrocketing health insurance premiums. Imagine in 2017, a new president signing legislation repealing every word of Obamacare. As we welcome you back to America's Forum with Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth, and of course, Texas Senator Ted Cruz mm -hmm. during his announcement, saying it's, it's really clear he's going to run for president, then repeal every word of Obamacare. And that statement has many wondering, what if he actually does it? Well, let's turn to our good friend, Newsmax Deputy Health Editor Nick Tate to discuss this very important health matter. Uh, Nick is the author of Da Vinci's Baby Boomer Survival Guide, and he joins us from our Newsmax TV newsroom. And that's a question, Nick, repealing every word of Obamacare. What happens if there's a President Cruz or there is a president who actually does repeal it? Well, you know, J.D., if only, if only it were that simple to uh, repeal the whole thing. The truth is the law's been on the books for five years. There are huge changes it's already had in the health care marketplace as well as on, um, on employers in a number of industries. Seems to me, though, that what is likely to happen is if the Supreme Court strikes down the subsidies, which are a key component of the Affordable Care Act in June, it really does set the table for Ted Cruz to be the primary voice on how we move forward with the Affordable Care Act or if we move forward with it at all. Potentially, in 2000, after 2016, we will have a Republican in the White House and Republicans controlling both branches of Congress, which could, in fact, create a kind of perfect storm that would allow for a true change and possibly repeal of, if not the whole act, at least key components of the act that many believe are bad for the economy, bad for health care, and bad for consumers. And speaking of voices, Senator Harry Reid says it's time to stop trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act and instead work with the Democrats trying to make it better. Can that be done, Nick? Or well Go well, ahead. That, well, that's the trillion dollar question. Uh, you know, the truth is that uh, members of Congress have not been able to work together from the very beginning, which is why this law was passed quickly through when the Democrats controlled the White House and both branches of Congress. Um, I do, the White House is now saying in response to Ted Cruz already, which suggests that they are taking what he's saying very seriously, reminding people that in fact Mitt Romney campaigned on a platform of repealing Obamacare and even at the, and we know how that worked out and at the tail end of Romney's campaign even he was saying it's not as simple to come in day one and repeal the law. It does seem to me that many of the ideas that Republicans have been floating, expanding consumer choice, turning over control back to the states, figuring out a way to get people in, who don't have insurance, insurance and getting them high quality health care while holding down costs. Many of those ideas that have been kind of on the table and discussed for a long time may in fact get some premium. So, you know, my take is that we are going to see some changes. I'm not sure it's going to be uh, completely repealing Obamacare in the next two years, but I think that what the law looks like today may be very different just two years from now. Of course, the political argument is the Democrats are claiming you repeal Obamacare. There are uninsured millions. Is that really true? Yes, it is. In fact, uh, one of the one of the main laws, one of the main provisions of Obamacare, one of the main drivers was really to expand insurance and lower the numbers of Americans who don't have insurance either because they were uninsured, uninsurable because they had pre-existing conditions or were underinsured. The numbers do show that somewhere between 10 and 16 million Americans now do have insurance that not that did not have it before, but there's still somewhere between 30 and 40 million Americans who despite of all despite all the money, despite the subsidies despite the regulations and the mandates, still don't have insurance in this country, which says to me we still need health care reform. This law didn't get us there. There may be a couple baby steps that the law took us toward that, but there still needs to be work to be done, which is, in my view, why not only Ted Cruz, but everyone running for president has to come up with a health care solution that gets us real reform, holds down costs, but increases the quality of care people are receiving. Nick, I'll have to have you back because I'm kind of suspicious of just a bunch of people ending up back on Medicaid. At any rate, we want you to learn how to survive the baby boomer financial crisis with Nick's newly released book, Da Vinci's Baby Boomer Survival Guide. You can get yours at the website, babyboomers711.com.